Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. This time, I bring you not a horror story... Not a mystery story, but a story that aficionados classify as the perfect crime. In other words, you see what our police friends call the perpetrator plan and execute what appears to be a perfect crime, one for which he will never be brought to book. And then you are kept in suspense, wondering or trying to figure out for yourself what little mistake he will make or has made that will nail him. Consider the case of Jennifer Palmer and her husband, Nick, who framed her with murder. But, Lieutenant, Jennifer couldn't have murdered Alexis Lauren. Jen simply isn't capable of murder. Mr. Chatterton, we're all capable of murder. Or so the head doctors say, anyhow. Jennifer didn't murder... Her prints are on the gun. She admits she was on the scene when Alexis Lauren was killed. Her motivation is strong and clear. Jealousy. I'm sorry, Mr. Chatterton, but it's a bad scenario for Jennifer Palmer. Real bad. Our mystery drama, Frame Up, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Lounging in this big, comfortable leather chair of mine, I sometimes get to speculating on whether I could commit try, anyhow, to commit the perfect crime. It must require a great deal of nerve and the conviction, I suppose, that one is a highly superior human being. Vanity of one's self. Contempt of others. Hmm. These would surely be two characteristics of whoever planned a perfect crime. Nick Palmer possessed both in abundance, but they were carefully concealed most of the time under a veneer of charm. Unhappily, so far as Jennifer, his wife, was concerned, that veneer had cracked long ago. Divorce! That's precisely the word I use, Nick. Divorce. But Jen, dear, on what grounds would you divorce me? In the four years of our marriage... You have been unfaithful at least four times. Ah, you can't prove that. And using the power of attorney I gave you, you mishandled my money. You can't prove that either. Well, luckily, I don't have to prove that. I had only to revoke the power of attorney, which I did this morning. Oh, dear, I don't like that. No, no, I don't like that at all. I didn't expect you would. I don't much like the idea of divorce either. It's bad for my, uh, practice. Ah, what practice? You haven't bothered to take on a law case in more than a year. Well, that's true. I don't believe in working if you don't have to. And, of course, using... misusing my money, you haven't had to. Look, uh, let me ask you a couple of questions, you mind? Go ahead. Have I in any way tried to interfere with your personal wishes in any way as a husband tried to keep you from whatever you might have wanted? (laughs) Such as? Well, you know how I feel about Sheila and the expense of keeping her in the Lawrence School. If you'd tried to get me to take her out of the Lawrence School, you'd have failed, and you know it. Sheila is my daughter, not yours. And she is also a special child. Special? Yes. 
A special child who needs the special treatment she gets at the Lawrence School. All right, we won't go into all that again. Have I ever asked you to give up those so-called art lessons of yours? So-called? What are you talking about? Well, you've been going to Chat Chatterton's studio twice a week for nearly two years. And what of it? What's wrong in having a hobby? Oh, is that all Chatterton is to you? A hobby, hmm? Chat Chatterton is an old friend, and I'm very fond of him. But that's all. Well, now, I don't like to strip you of your security blanket, my darling. But you leave me no option. What are you getting at? Just this, Jen. Unless you agree to leave things as they are, I'm afraid I shall have to take measures to stop you. Well, there's nothing you can do to stop me. Oh, yes. Yes, there really is. I could put you behind bars for murder. You what? <laughs> Frame you. Frame me? With murder? Are you crazy? Frame you with a murder you didn't commit? And enjoy. Oh, doing. you are crazy. <laughs> crazy enough to see you put behind bars for 10 to 20 years at least. More than sufficient time for me to enjoy your money. Huh? Now then, will you drop the divorce and reinstate the power of attorney? Of course not. And what's more, I want you to pack your bags and get out of this house at once. Oh, no, Jen, where would I go? I don't care where you go. All I know is I can't bear being in the same house with you. Well, in that case, shouldn't you be the one to leave? I like the house, and really, I like you, Jen. I don't mind being with you one little bit. I... You... Oh, very well. I'll leave. Anything to be rid of you. Goodbye. Not goodbye, my darling. Not yet. Jen? Hmm? Uh, would you use a warm or cool shadow here under the jawline? Jen? Huh? Oh, what, Alexis? Oh, this portrait I'm working on, I'm not sure if I should use a warm or... Jen, are you all right? Mm, yes, sure, sure, Alexis. Uh, why do you ask? Well, all through painting class today, you... Well, your thoughts seem to be elsewhere. Well, I... Uh, something on my mind, that's all. Oh. Well, anything I can help you with? No, no, it's, uh... Something that I have to work out for myself. A ten-minute break, everybody. Oh. And then I'll have a look at what you've done. <coughs> hey, that portrait's coming along fine, Alexis. <laughs> Wish I could say the same for your still life, Jen. Oh, I wish I could too, Chad. Oh, well, she just hasn't been with it today. Yes, I sort of sense that. Um, Alexis, do me a favor, will you? Oh, you have but to command, Master. <laughs> have everybody arrange their paintings along the wall so I can just walk by and look at them, huh? Master, I go. <laughs> Care to talk about it? Chad, Nick, threatened me this morning. Threatened you? To frame me with murder. Would you run through that again? To frame me for murder. You told him about divorcing him then? And revoking the power of attorney. And he said he... Well, he must be out of his mind. How could he frame you or anybody for murder? I don't know. But if anyone can, he can Oh, come on now, Jen. No, I know him better than you do. He's brilliant. He's got a mind that... Honestly, sometimes it scares me. Well, he doesn't scare me. I'll take care of this little matter in short order. How, oh, Chad? What can you do? I can go and see that creep husband of yours and make a few threats of my own. Jen's going to get her divorce, and she's already revoked your power of attorney, and that's that. You give her any trouble, and I'll beat the living daylights. Look, I assure you, unless she gives up all thought of divorce and reinstates the power of attorney I've enjoyed, well... Look, she's... you dirty... You go ahead, hit me. I'd like nothing better. 6-2 against my 5-10? I could sue you for every penny you've got. If you've got anything worth suing for... Or are you just living on hopes? What do you mean? Jen's money. Once free of me, if she gets free, the field would be wide open for you, wouldn't it? Why, I could... Take... 
I warned you. Oh, you did? Ah. I was foolish not to take your warning. But you know, I think it'll be foolish of you not to take mine. Which is quite simply... Stay out of this. I have no intention of staying out. A large tube of zinc white, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, a couple of tubes of ultramarine, cerulean, cad red light. Uh, excuse me. Hmm? But aren't you Alexis uh, Thorne, is it? Lorne. Alexis Lorne. Uh, I'm afraid well, I I'm don't Jennifer know. I'm Jennifer Palmer's husband, Nick. Uh, you and I met about a year ago. Oh, we chat, chatted in the studio, of course. We, you attended the student art exhibit. Yeah, that's right. Well, this is a pleasure. Uh, Jen asked me to pick up some paints for her, and I run into you. My lucky day. Oh, how nice of you. No, no, no. It's, it's always a pleasure to meet a pretty girl again. Uh, tell me, Miss Lawn, is, um, is your hobby still portrait painting? Oh, well, you remembered. Yes, it is. Well, the thought crossed my mind when I saw your work at the exhibit. Look, wouldn't it be a nice idea to give Jen a portrait of me on some occasion or other, a birthday, anniversary, you know, and uh, running into you accidentally like this? I... Look here. How would you like to do a portrait of me? Me? Yes, you see, we have a fifth wedding anniversary coming up in a month, and I'd like nothing better than to give Jen a portrait of myself. Oh, but, but I'm only an amateur, Mr. Palmer. What's that got to do with it? I'm sure Jen would be doubly pleased if the portrait were painted by you. Well, we guess she might. What do you say, then? Uh, well, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll do it. Good, that's well. Oh, uh, not a word to Jen, of course. Oh, of course not. Could we, um, could we begin tonight, do you think, in, in my study at home? Your study? But... But if I come to your house and she sees me... Oh, she me, won't. Then... She's going to the Lawrence School tonight to see her her daughter, Sheila. Oh, yes. Poor little thing. So if uh, you could come along, say, about 8.30? Yes, I, I can and I will. And thanks ever so much, Mr. Palmer. <laughs> I don't mind telling you that this is my first commission. <laughs> and hopefully not your last. Hopefully. <laughs> Jen, don't say no. I beg you, don't. Our, our whole marriage depends on it. What marriage, Nick? Jen, give me this one more chance, and I I promise I'll make everything up to you. I'll, I'll spend my life making it up to Nick, you. Nick, I have no intention of giving you power of attorney I don't want again. that. That's what I'm trying to tell you, why I want to talk with you. I realize what a mess I made of things, and I'd, I'd like the chance, just one chance, to make amends. You'll come, I know you will. Nine tonight. Please. All right, Nick. I'll see you at nine. Jen, I... I can't tell you how grateful I am. Turn just, just a little more to the left, huh? Toward the light of the lamp. Uh, like so? Perfect. The other way, you see, we get a light effect where one side of the face is totally in shadow. We don't want that. It, it, it sounded like a car. A car in your driveway. Yes, it is. Matter of fact, it's uh, Jan. Jan? Your wife? You know any other Jan? What is this? Are you playing some kind of game? You don't want your portrait to... <gasps> That's a... What you just took from that drawer. It's a gun. Yes, I'm... Uh... Sorry to dash your hopes, Alexis. Dash my hopes? Remember you told me this was your first commission and I said hopefully it wouldn't be your last? Sorry, dear, it is. <laughs> oh, oh. Jen, come in, dearest, come in. <laughs> You're right on time. So Jennifer Palmer walks into a trap, and the trap is sprung. Nick promised her he'd frame her with a murder. And from where I sit, he's well on his way to keeping that promise. I'll return shortly for Act Two. Well, now. 
we've been discussing the perfect crime, and we have seen Nick Palmer take the first step toward the accomplishment of his perfect crime by inviting Alexis Lorne to paint his portrait, and then in cold blood shooting her dead as his estranged wife, Jennifer, rings the front door buzzer. But, frankly, I don't get it, do you? I mean, quite obviously, he plans to frame Jennifer for the murder of Alexis, but exactly how will he do that? All right, Nick. Say what you have to say. Oh, come on, Jen. Sit down. Let's have a drink. No! Just tell me what you have to say, and I'll go. Okay. Jen, I'm sorry I made you such a rotten husband. I'm sorry about playing around, about squandering your money the whole bit. I'm sorry I made no effort to be more of a father to Sheila. Well, she's not your daughter. Even so, I know what she means to you. Oh, please. If all you're trying to say is that you want another chance, my answer is no. Well, everyone deserves a second chance. Yes, but this would be about the 20th for you, Nick. Good night. I can't live without you. You can scarcely expect me to believe that. No, no, it's the truth. I don't want to live without you. Refuse me one more chance and and you might as well kill me. I think you'll survive. Now, let me show you. I mean what I say. Nick, are you mad? Will you put that gun down? Oh, no, I've got it pointed straight at my head, Jen. Now, tell me that you'll return to me or I swear I'll pull this. Nick. Say it. Say you'll take me back. Nick, I can't lie to you. Now, give me that gun. No, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself you. No, you're not. Now give me the gun. That's better. I'm everything you say I am, Jen. I haven't even got the guts to shoot myself. Well, let's both be glad that you haven't. Even so, I'll keep this gun. Just in case. Took the gun away from him just like that? Pretty damn cool of you, Jim. No, not at all, Chad. Nick had forgotten that he pulled this little scene once before. Only I fell for it that time. I wasn't falling for it again. He had no intention of killing himself, and I knew it. And why did you keep the gun? Well, just to play it safe, I guess, because you never know. You know, you really never know. That's true enough. Well... This is a great pleasure, you dropping by like this. I had to tell somebody. Sure you did. Oh. (laughs) This is my night for unexpected visitors. Well, all right, I'm coming. Yes? I'm Detective Rice Police. My partner, Jim Andrews. Detectives? You Jennifer Palmer? Yes, I am. Hi, Mrs. Palmer. I hereby arrest you on suspicion of murder. Suspicion of... It's my what? duty to tell you that it's your right to refuse now, to... Now, wait have... a minute. What in the world You'd are you... You better stay out of this, bud. One thing more, Mrs. Palmer. Anything you say can be used in evidence against you. Okay, let's go. Yes, of course. But murder... Uh, just a minute. Will you open your bag, please? It's my handbag, yes. Sure. This the gun you used? The gun I... Oh, no. No. Never mind. Just come along. No. No, I'll keep the handbag. Right in here, Mrs. Palmer. And this is her, Lieutenant. Sit down, Mrs. Palmer. We found the gun, 25 automatic, in a handbag. I sent it on to the lab for tests. Okay. Thanks. Now, you want a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thank you, ma'am. Lieutenant. Oh. Detective Lieutenant McCluskey. Lieutenant. Oh, uh, I, I really don't uh, know what this is all about. And you've been arrested on suspicion of murder. Rice must have told you that. Oh, yes, but... Uh, well, you murder somebody or not? Of course not. You didn't, huh? Of course not. You know anybody named Lorne? Alexis Lorne. Alexis, yes. Yes, she's in a painting class I attend at the Chatterton studio. Not anymore, Mrs. Palmer. What? She's dead. Alexis is dead? Yeah, that's why you're here. On suspicion of killing her. 
I sure you don't want that coffee. Oh, yes, I will. Thank you. Uh. Well, why, why would I kill Alexis Lorne? You tell me. Oh, here. Thank you. I guess maybe I'd better tell you. About two hours ago, 9.25 to be exact, we got a call from your husband, Nicholas Palmer, from your home. He said a murder had been committed. We get there, we find this girl, Alexis Lorne, has been murdered. Shot to death. So what does that to do with me? You care to tell it now, or you want me to tell it? You, Aaron, drink your coffee. Your husband says that this Alexis is painting his portrait in the den room. He says his hair gets all mussed up. He doesn't know how, but we figure we know. And he goes upstairs to brush it. He hears shots. He comes running downstairs. And Alexis is dead on the floor. Then he hears a car start up in the driveway. He runs to the window and looks out, and he sees you drive away in your car. Well, how, how could he tell that it was me? I mean, after all, it was night. But a full moon. The moon at 9.20 thereabouts was full and bright. He recognized the blue sedan you drive. Also that, that maroon coat you're wearing. I don't remember the moonlight, but then my mind was on other things. Then you were there. Oh, yes. At that time? I guess so, yes. In other words, you found out he was fooling around with this Alexis, so... No, you... I didn't find out anything. Then what'd you go there for? Oh, I wish I knew. Huh? Well, I hate him, really, but... I feel sorry for him, too, and he phoned me and he said, please, come over and let's talk things over, and so I went. But you wouldn't understand any of that. I'm a woman. I've been in love. Why wouldn't I understand? Here, have another cup. No, thank you. Is that bad? No, no. Now, tell me more about him asking you to come there. Well, I don't see what... And what happened... After you got there. I don't see what that has to do with Alexis being dead, being killed. I mean, why Nick phoned and why I went there and what happened after I got there. Don't ask. Just tell. Oh, Chad. Oh, how are you doing, Jen? Oh, well, I'm doing. Oh, Jen. Chad. Oh. I, I I didn't know what to bring uh, candies out, uh, figure, and flowers, funereal. So, uh, so I brought this. Oh, it's sketch pad and drawing pencil. Thank you, Jack. Oh, it keeps you occupied. I ran over to the Lawrence School, saw Sheila. Jack. Oh, she's fine, fine. Nothing to worry about. But how are you? I'm awful. Sure, but listen. You've got a friend. You. Me? Oh, I'm more than a friend, you know that. Anyhow, I, I could be if, if you ever let me. Uh, McCloskey. Lieutenant McCloskey? Mm. I asked to see her, and she said, okay, she... She believes your story, but the evidence is against you. A hundred percent. He framed me. Mm. He said he'd do it, and he did it. The way I see it is that he shot Alexis to death, timing it at the moment that I arrived. And then a little later, he went into that act about shooting himself, knowing that I'd take the gun out of his hand so that my fingerprints are on the gun. And the whole rotten mess about my divorcing him for infidelity and the mishandling of money. Chad, what about the money? I mean, I'm thinking about Sheila. The money... The... He's tied it up. Somehow, don't ask me. It's legal mumbo-jumbo, things I don't understand. Like, you could have been free on a hundred thousand bail, but he blocked that, said you were unfit and so on. Unfit? Yeah, well, I guess I shouldn't have said what that. If, what do you mean, unfit? Well, it... That sounds like... like something to do with Sheila. Well, is it... Chad? Listen now. I'm listening, for heaven's sake, Chad, please. All right, all right. He's, he's moving already. He's moving to get control of, of your money, of, of Sheila, of everything. But he can't do that. Do you think he can? 
Well, you might as well know. He can and he is. But how? He's still your husband with certain legal rights, I guess. And a brilliant lawyer. Jen, I don't understand these things. It, it takes a set of mental muscles I never had, but... But he can do it, and he's doing it, and there's only one out for you. For me and Sheila, you mean? Sheila? Yes, it's the money he's after. That's all he's ever been after. That's all he's ever wanted. And if I'm convicted, it will mean the death of Sheila. He'll take her out of the Lawrence School, and he'll put her away. So... No, no, he he wouldn't do that. We'd, we, we'll never let him do that. How can we stop him? How? M McCloskey, she says it's, it's a matter of his word against yours. Plus the evidence against me. Well, yes, that too. Yes, that too. Hmm. There are the prints, my prints on the gun. And the fact that I was divorcing him for playing around. His story that he was playing around with Alexis and that I heard about it and blew my stack. And I was there. And the coroner says she died approximately at the time I was there. Oh, Chad, he's framed me. He's framed me good. <sighs> Unless we can prove he's lying. <sighs> something bugs me about his story. Huh? There's something that doesn't make sense, doesn't hang right. What? Oh, I don't know. If I knew, you wouldn't be sitting in this cell awaiting trial. But there's... Something, something, I, I... Well, I'm looking straight at it and I can't see it. But it's there, I know it's there. And if I can find it, see it, he'll be behind bars and you'll be free. And if you can't find it, Sheila's life and all the treatment that would have made her well again and all the future that lay before her until now, that will be all gone. Why do you look at me like that? All you want is what's best for Sheila. And all I want is what's best for you. That's because you love your daughter more than anything else in the world, and I... And you... Love you more than anything else in the world. Huh? Oh, well, whatever it is I'm looking at and can't see, what, whatever's staring me in the face that I can't find, I, I better see it. I better find it. Come now, what could be staring Chat Chatterton in the face? What vital clue he can't see? If it's staring him in the face, it's staring us in the face, too. And I don't see a thing. Do you? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Framed into a charge of murder by her husband, a murder he committed... Jennifer Palmer, if found guilty, faces a sentence of anywhere from 20 years to life. But if the thought of spending years in prison for a crime she didn't commit is torment to Jen, the prospect of what lies ahead for her young daughter Sheila is agony. For Sheila, a special child, needs constant professional care and treatment. Care and treatment that will surely be withdrawn if Nick Palmer gains custody. Now, as witness for the prosecution, Nick takes the stand in the trial of the state versus Jennifer Palmer. Now, Mr. Palmer, I show you this gun. You ever seen it before? Uh, well, yes, that's um, a twenty-five caliber automatic we kept in a desk drawer at home. You know, in case of need, self-defense. I see. Now, on the night Miss Lorne, Alexis Lorne, was shot to death with this gun, she was painting your portrait... Uh, yes. Would you tell this court how it was that she came to be painting your portrait in your study at 9 o'clock at night? Well, I, um... Uh, I wanted to give the portrait to my wife as an anniversary gift. I wanted it to be a surprise, and so the sittings had to be held when she wasn't at home. And that night she'd gone to... Well, she said... She said she'd gone to the Lawrence School to visit her daughter, Sheila. That's a lie! Huh? I left him... No, I was going to sue him for divorce. I... I... I'm sorry, Your Honor. Well, I'll proceed, Your Honor. Uh, you and Miss Lorne were alone in the house then at nine that night. Uh, yes. Let's see, I, uh... Oh, yeah, I, I remember my hair had gotten a bit, uh, uh, rumpled, and I went up to my bedroom to brush it. Why? Well, let me interrupt, uh... 
How did your hair become rumpled? Uh, messed up? I... I beg your pardon? I'm sure you heard my question. Oh, well, it, it just got a little... Uh, a little messed up, that's all. It hadn't got that way because of... Uh, shall we say... Something that had gone on between you and... Uh, Miss Lorne? Well, I don't know what you're getting at. What I'm getting at, Mr. Palmer, is this. The state contends that your wife killed Miss Lorne out of jealousy. And what I'm getting at is that she had grounds for jealousy. All right, if you... If you mean was I fooling around with Alexis... That's I... exactly what I mean. Well, yes, I, I was. Thank you. Now, you are in your bedroom brushing your hair. Yes, and I hear these gunshots, three of them. I come running downstairs and I find Alexis dead, sprawled on the floor of my study. Then I heard a car start out in the driveway, so I ran to the window and I... I saw my wife Jennifer taking off fast in her car. I rushed to the phone, I called the police and... Well, that's all. How far would you say the driveway is from the window you went to? Oh, not more than a hundred feet. Circular driveway, I believe. Guess that's right. Now, you are positive it was your wife's car you saw and that the person driving it was your wife? Positive. Since it was nine o'clock at night, Mr. Palmer, night, how can you be so positive? Well, you see, the moon, the moon was at its fullest, its brightest. It, it was practically daylight. So then you recognized your wife's car? Oh, yes, it was her car, all right. Dark blue, two-door sedan, and she was driving. I, I saw her clearly. You saw her face clearly? Well, no, not her face, but, but she was wearing a coat, a dark maroon coat that I'd recognize anywhere. But then you cannot really swear it was your wife driving that car. I, I don't know who else would be driving her car and wearing her coat, do you? No, no, I don't. Thank you. No further questions. Your witness. can't. They can't do this. I've got to see Sheila. Now, Jen, I've got to Jen, before come they send on, me try away. To quiet down. Take it easy. What is going to happen to Sheila when I'm not here anymore to see that she's properly cared for? You know what Nick's going to do just as soon as he can do it. He'll take her out of the Lawrence school and he'll throw her into some second or third rate place. He'll leave her there to rot. Please, I can't stand it. Oh. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Case of hysterics. Huh? Well, Lieutenant McCloskey. I heard Mrs. Palmer's leaving for upstate tomorrow. I thought I'd just <laughs> drop by. Wish her good luck. Nice of you. Uh, how would you like to buy me a cup of coffee? Later. Huh? Why, well, well, sure. Yeah, I'll meet you outside then in five, ten minutes. Oh, hey, come on now, Mrs. Palmer. Come on, let, let's sit up, huh? And... and Dry the tears. Look, you don't want to go to pieces. There's always hope. Even when things look the worst, there's hope. Now, look, tomorrow they'll be taking you up to women's prison. I can't bear the thought of it. You can because you've got to. Now, Captain Greenberg up there, she's an old pal of mine. I've talked to her about you. She's going to do all she can to make things comfortable for you. As long as you keep your nose clean, you understand? Yes, I do. Now, you do as you're told when you're told to do it. And no hysterics or making scenes or like that. Okay? Okay, I'll try. You'll do it. How will I get to see my daughter when I'm up there? All those years, oh, my God. All those years without me. What will she do? Please, I've got to see her on a regular basis somehow. And it's got to be arranged so that I can check on her and know that she's all right. <laughs> Could that be arranged? Could it? Through proper channels. The warden's office. But you believe me now. Everything that can be done will be done. <laughs> Lieutenant McCloskey. Of course. Send him in. Oh, don't tell me, Chad. From the look on your face, it's clear you've just come from seeing Jen in women's prison. From seeing her in the infirmary in women's prison. Mac, I think she's died. Oh, come on. I mean it. Not seeing Sheila all these months. 
Nick refusing to bring her to the prison, refusing to let anybody else take her, and... And now learning that the kid's been placed in a... Well, you know the kind of institution. I'm afraid I do. But how did she learn about that? He wrote and told her the dirty creep. Oh. Nick wants to kill her, and he's succeeding. You should have seen her. I saw her last week. <sighs> Well, Chad, I wish there was something I could do. Something somebody could do. But there isn't. It was her story against his, but unfortunately for her, all the evidence was against her. Even to the moonlight. Moonlight? Oh, it being a bright moonlit night. That didn't just happen, you know. Nick Palmer planned things that way. Planned everything for a night when there would be a full moon. Yeah. And tricked her into grabbing the gun away from him. Damn, if I could only... Only what, Chet? There's something. For months now, it's been gnawing at the back of my mind. Something. What kind of something? Something that's wrong with Nick Palmer's story. Something that doesn't fit. It's staring me in the face, yet I can't see it. Are you sure it isn't just, you know, wishful thinking? I mean, you want to prove Jen's innocent. I want to save her life, because that's what's at stake now. And no, it isn't wishful thinking. There is something. And by heaven, I'm going to find it. Nick Palmer lied, and whatever the something I'm looking for is, it'll prove he lied. All right, coffee break over, class. Settle down, settle down. Now, we'll return now to our discussion of color. And, and no questions, please, until I'm finished. <laughs> Great artists haven't just used colors in their work. They have intimately understood, felt, experienced color. Now, here. Here is a tomato. I hold it up to the sunlight, and we see that its color is red. Or so we mistakenly think. The simple fact of the matter is that the tomato isn't red. The tomato in and of itself has no color at all. <laughs> It's sunlight that gives it color. Why? Because sunlight and only sunlight contains color. The colors of the solar spectrum we can see in a rainbow. What happens is that an object, any object, absorbs all the colors of the spectrum. All the colors in sunlight except one. A tomato absorbs all spectrum colors but red. A banana, all colors, but yellow, and so on. In other words, without... Without... Oh, good Lord. There it is. There it is! <laughs> Lieutenant McCloskey, please, and, and hurry. Mac? Chat chattered. Mac, I can prove Nick Palmer lied. Yes, you heard me. I can prove it. The thing that's been staring me in the face for months and I couldn't see it, well... Well, I see it now. I see it bright and clear. Oh, now, wait a minute. You barge into my house, Chatham, along with this Lieutenant McCloskey, and you tell me that you're here to test out my story about what happened that night? No, first of all, Mr. Palmer, we didn't barge in. We asked to come in. Second of all, unless you've got something to hide, you'll go along with my request. Hide? Oh, what would I have to hide? The fact that you lied when you said you recognized your wife's car driving off out of that driveway out there, even noted the color of her coat, when the fact is you couldn't have recognized either. What are you talking about? It was a bright moonlight night. It was so bright it could have been daylight. Only it wasn't. Wasn't w It wasn't daylight. And there's a big difference between moonlight and daylight. Oh, moonlight. A very big difference. Moonlight, daylight, I saw what I saw. I saw Jen's two-door blue sedan and Jen at the wheel. All right, I didn't see her face, just her coat, a dark maroon coat. You're positive of that? Well, I swore it under oath, didn't I? Yes, you did. Now all I'm asking you to do is prove what you said was the truth. If you were telling the truth, you will. If you weren't, you won't. It's up to you, Mr. Palmer. Okay, what do you want me to do? Well, there's a full moon tonight. Come and look. There. You can see the driveway, just as you saw it on the night of the murder. Clear and bright as, uh, 
Daylight, you said. Ah, that's right. And now what I'm going to do, using this little two-way radio of mine, is to order one of my men, Detective Rice, to parade, you might say, a number of cars past you as you stand here in the window. Now, don't concern yourself with the drivers. The colors of their coats are like that. You just pay special attention to the colors of the cars, okay? Look, Lieutenant, this is silly. Okay, Ed. Send the first car through. The color of that car, Mr. Palmer. What? What is it? Well, it's white. Next car, Ed. Name that color. Quick. It's a uh, black. Next car, Ed. What color? It's black, too. Oh, wait a minute. It, it, it could have been... Yes? Well, I, I, I don't know. It where. Next car. Name it. Uh, uh, green. Next car. Uh, no. Hold up, Ed. I think that's enough. Well, are you satisfied, Lieutenant? Satisfied enough to say this, Mr. Palmer. That you lied when you said you recognized your wife's car and the coat she was wearing. Lied? I don't know what you... You said the first car that came around the driveway was white. All right, it was. No. It was powder blue. You said the second car was black. But it was a dark blue. It was what? The no. third car was a deep shade of green, but you called it black. Well, I wasn't sure of that one. I, I, I started to change my mind. Exactly. But... You started to change your mind. You weren't certain. Because in no case, with no car, could you really say for sure that is its color. Mr. Palmer, you lied when you gave your first statement to the police and lied under oath when you gave testimony in your wife's trial. There's more than enough evidence here to reopen this case. And what's more, Mr. Palmer, to open an inquiry into exactly why you lied. <laughs> It is said, and truly said, that perfection is something aimed at, but seldom achieved. Never achieved, I may venture to say, when it comes to crime. Did I say never? Well, hardly ever. I'll be back shortly. I'm sure you'll want to know that Jen was quickly released from women's prison and is today happily married to Chat Chatterton. Sheila, Jen's daughter, continues at a school for special children where she is responding very well indeed to treatment and therapy. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Leon Janney, Bryna Rayburn, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. A preview of our next tale. We're having a bit of trouble, Lyle, with the, uh, with the climbing boys. The... Red ones new to it, sir. Got up a few feet and wouldn't budge. Wouldn't budge, eh? Well, I've got a way to fix that. Saw it done at Lady Milburn's a week ago. William, what are you doing? I've, uh, I've got a little bit of hay here. I was saving it to give to my horse. <laughs> You're not lighting it. Well, of course I am. <gasps> now, let's add a little something. Let's see what have we got. Well, here. here's a few pages from the London Tap. Oh, no, that's, that's, that'll do the trick. Oh, you can't. You stop it. Brute. You brute. Oh. I don't move him, all right. Yeah, if, he, if he doesn't oh. want his feet burnt to a crisp. I can't bear it. I can't. Now, go to your room, Emily. No. Is he moving? Oh, he must be. Oh, dear God. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, 